So Rat's Nest Cave is a cave out in Canmore. It's very accessible um, from the highway. It's only about a 25 minute hike in from the parking lot. It sees a lot of traffic. It's a great place for beginner cavers to learn and hone their skills. Because this cave is so accessible and so many people know about it, it does see a lot more traffic than pretty much any other cave in the area. That's why we chose Rat's Nest to do our restoration project in. Rat's Nest um, has seen so many people over so many years that along the main routes a lot of the formations are very very muddied and damaged, broken. There has been uh, a lot of incidents in the past of direct vandalism um, but I think most of the damage has come from people who weren't aware of what they were doing, uh, didn't know how to cave in a conservative manner uh, and were just being um, careless in their movements. A lot of soda straws have been broken. That's stuff we can't repair. So I've taken a picture of this formation. We're going to um put this on our list of formations to restore in the future. And do you think we should do the bacon strip, the stalagmite below, and the upper stalagmite, yeah, or just a portion of it? Be. All three? Okay. I agree. Does everyone else agree with that? Yep. Okay. And, Water used for cave restoration is very, very important. It needs to be the correct type of water. Chemically treated water from the city will not work. It needs to be water from the cave near the formations that you're cleaning. We used a pool of water that is standing at all times. We assume that this water is most likely to have the highest level of calcium bicarbonate in solution. is to try and get as much of this exterior mud off of the column as possible. Um, the natural color of the column is this uh, off-white color and you can still kind of see it a little bit. Now this column is very porous, there's lots of holes, the mud is right in there. As well as it is wet, you can see it glisten in my light, which means it's still growing. Uh, there's still calcium carbonate being deposited on the formation and uh, so that means that most of the mud is actually going to be underneath this layer of carbonate or calcium deposit rather. Um, so we're not going to be trying to dig that out. What, what's underneath the most, well, top layer of uh, calcium, we're just going to leave there. So our goal is to just remove all of the loose mud. We're going to try and clean that up so that it doesn't get um, built into the column in the future. But like there's some the straps, there's time. a couple other things around you can Yeah, absolutely. Out. We can like grab a piece of
restoration tools required to clean the mud off of the formations included a container to put the clean cave water in, as well as a container to put the dirty cave water in, spray bottles, sponges, tweezers, toothbrushes, nail file or nail brushes, plastic toothpicks, foam paint brushes, long bristled paint brushes to wipe away solid debris, turkey baster, uh, powder-free latex gloves, and Ziploc bags to put any gar garbage and waste in. We were very pleased with the restoration effort that we made. The results, though not perfect, were very good. It will take many, many more trips to restore even this, the formations that we worked on today, and there are many other formations still to look at. We're going to have future trips go in and continue cleaning the formations we worked on today, as well as many of the other formations. Some we've already flagged as the next ones on our list. Uh, we're going to keep flagging um, the areas to keep cavers away from them to hopefully prevent any more mud being transferred onto them. And basically, our main goal is just to continue the knowledge transfer of conservative caving to everyone who goes into the cave, both those who are helping with the restoration trips and those who are just there for um, recreation purposes.